Multiplayer Mayhem Borderlands 2. Ich habe mir hier gerade den Steve Gibson geschnappt, Creator Director von Borderlands 2. Great to have you here. Hello. So, um, can you give us any more details about the story? Story, yeah. So, the story of Borderlands 2, this is five years later now in the story of Borderlands. And the first one you guys remember, the story was <laughs> the vault opened, right? Kind of, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> so, five years have passed. And uh, there's been fallout from the vault being opened and everything that's happened. Uh, so what happened? What you are, your, what your part of the story is in Borderlands 2 is um, you are coming to the planet and you find that Handsome Jack and the Hyperion Corporation have now overtaken the planet and they're reaping the rewards of you know all this fallout from them. In addition, you discover early on in the game that the warrior is being awoken. Now you don't know what the warrior is, but at the very beginning the planet begins to shake. And your understanding is that Handsome Jack is awakening the warrior to you know, further his goals of you know, taking over the world and he wants to harness the power of the warrior. So your goal in Borderlands 2 is to stop Handsome Jack and stop the warrior. It's kind of cool. So uh, is it like that Handsome Jack has this kind of moon army, right? Yeah. So yeah. We, see the, we saw this, all those robots, they are dropping from the moon. Mm -hmm. So we have like a base around here? Or? Yeah, uh, Handsome Jack has a has a moon, blade, moon base in the big shape of an H for Hyperion. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and so he he shoots in reinforcements from the from the moon base and to to stop you from what you're trying to do. If you have to draw a comparison, would you say it's like uh, that Borderlands is a bit like Diablo as a shooter? Um, is, we hear that a lot. Sure. Is it kind of a Diablo style game? Um, the the loot system is the the millions of possibilities of weapons is yeah it can be a lot of people compare it to Diablo, um, but the um, the perspective and the story and the style are far different. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah it sounds pretty cool. So yeah. um, maybe can, we can talk about this a bit. So it's like when you first started Borderlands, it was more kind of a realistic approach, right? Yeah, early, yeah, yeah, yeah. The art style and, and, and the tone was much different too. Yeah. And now you got a more cartoony kind of. How did you come up with this? How, how did the art style? Yeah. Change? Oh, that was a uh, that was from the the art team way back in 2008. Um, they they were feeling like the, um, they just wanted the, something to feel more fresh about it. Is essentially what my understanding was. Not not having been on the art team, I can't tell you exactly. But what I can tell you is that what happened was, you know, you know towards the second half of Borderlands, um, the art our team proposed this idea, which was radical at the time. And um, what happened was when that art style when that art style was approved and 2K got on board with it, it really affected this tone and style of the entire game. That sense of humor started coming out more and more, and they, the way characters that that morbid, like awful world combined with this, you know, humor was it felt like a great combination, and it also enabled the things that felt like they didn't fit, they could fit more things into the world now. Like those guns that felt so kind of odd before, now those guns felt like they made sense in this world because of the style of that world. That's really interesting because we have just those different factories, right? So it's like. Um you have more or less like uh, factories that are not so expensive and factories that are expensive and like factories yeah. that do weapons that are more like brand or yeah. more like uh, fire and stuff like that. Yeah. So how does this uh, feed into the world? Um, so if you guys, um, if you played the Borderlands DLCs, you probably actually started to experience that a little bit. You saw the Atlas Corporation and how they were involved in the DLC. You saw the very first DLC even uh, was Jacobs and Zombie Island. Yeah. And so what we've tried to do is bring these brands a little bit further forward for when a person first picks up a gun now in Borderlands 2, they'll be able to see not only the weapon style of like is it an assault rifle or anything like that, you'll be able to identify the brand based on the shapes and, and, and the uh, materials being used. And you'll also get some expectations with that. Um, Kevin Duke actually over here was, did a lot of the visual design on that. You should, you should ask him about how a lot of those inspirations happen. But now when a person picks up a gun in Borderlands 2, the visual communication is much, much stronger now. So you'll be able to see the weapon class style. You'll be able to figure out by looking at it, hey, what this thing's going to shoot, what kind of effects it may have, how fast it'll fire, how fast I can reload. Or if it, you don't even reload on the key, or you actually just toss them away because they're disposable guns. So you'll be able to see that much more on the visual side of guns now. And uh, about classes, so you have like four classes now, yeah. right? Can you explain it a bit? So the four classes of Borderlands 2, you, today you're playing as the, the new Siren Maya. Uh, there are every there are sirens in the world of Borderlands, but each one has a very distinct skill. So even though she's called a siren, much like the first one, her skill is entirely different. Her skill is called the Phase Lock. What she does is she can um, uh, she can point to an enemy, lift him up, and 
can case it in this you know, mystical bubble in a way. And what it can also do is now there's a bunch of crowd follower as well. So if you identify the target, and then it affects a bunch of the other targets around them. So she can root them into the ground, you know, catch them on fire. And her skill is all about crowd control. And she can also go down a healer path on her skill tree, where she can actually point to a friend who's gone down, who's got killed, and she can go resin. So the, the skills trees are much deeper and richer this time around, because we want the role playing guys especially to really feel rewarded, to, to be able to dig more into the skills. Yeah. What I really like is this, uh, you have just dual wield system, basically you can uh, <coughs> take two weapons, but you have a like, kind of cool, like, kind of cool down, right? Yeah. So you can just use it for some time. Yes. Weapons. But you can improve this with uh, also like perks. Yes. Kind of. Yeah. So yeah, the second class is the Gunzerker, uh, Salvador, right here actually. Yeah. And uh, yeah, his his skill revolves around the uh, what the role playing guys are calling it, the aggro. So he can do a lot of drawing crowds and getting in the middle of them and mixing up them, doing two weapons. And that's not just rifles. He can do wheel even rocket launchers, sniper rifles, whatever he wants to do a wheel. And that skill also can be built so that he can, you know, do a like a vampirism of health, and when he damages people, he gets health back. All the skills, all the skill tree stuff for him revolves around mixing up and getting in tight and causing lots of damage or receiving lots of damage. So he's the aggro of the four classes. Could we could we a bit back and sorry, it's like um, now we have to save basically the, the heroes of the first one left, right? Uh, the, uh, well, you're not saving Mordecai. He's he's free. Yeah, but you have to say, for example, like Buckley, which is like his yes, yeah, his, yeah, his his pet has been captured, yeah. Um, and Roland actually was captured, as you guys, if you saw the game come in, yeah. he actually is captured. The other two characters are also part of the story. Um, they're not all captured. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So you run into them, and they're all going to have gone through different things over the five years that have passed by. It's just the events of Orlando's. But yeah, you'll run into all of them, and you'll you'll, you'll meet Lilith the and then you'll know, be able to break again. So okay, I'll get to the third class. Third class is uh, Commando. Okay. So Commando, his skill uh, is, is, can, is has a lot of similarities to the soldier to the role in the first one, where he does he deploys a point of attack, right? And that thing causes damage, and it's just, it's just a second piece of attack. What's different about the Commando this time around, though, is that his he can deploy a turret, but he can also deploy via longbow, so it can go across the map. So, for example, we have a, a gunzerker off doing something stupid, right, getting killed. You have a siren and you have a commando. You can have the siren from across the map remote res him, and then you have a commando fire off a longbow turret to give him support. So you can you even do long range support for with that character class. And then the commando can even deploy multiple turrets as well if he goes through a different skill tree and can do a couple. Do you have any idea how much weapons you have in the game? More than last time. More than last time, so yes. How much was it last time? Um, it was, when we did a count, it was around 17 million in Borderlands 1. Oh my god. So, more this time? I don't know. The, the numbers keep changing all the way up until you launch because they keep trying to add, make more new things. It's always like, I always get a new weapon, right? It's not yeah. like I have, I don't know, like a sharpshooter or whatever and I can upgrade it. No. That's yeah. not possible. It's not like, it's not like, it's yeah. Skill. Yeah, you can use your skill trees to complement them, but. Yeah, the weapons we want you to always be experiencing new weapons. The um, what is what is the, what is the craziest weapon we have in the game? You don't know? They're still changing. They're still crazy. They can get crazier. Um, I've seen um, like a I've seen a rocket launcher with a spinning barrel just firing off multiple rockets. Uh, the the thing that we've added a lot of in Borderlands 2 is there's many more uh, uniques and rares. So you have special name. I mean, very similar to the Diablo system. So you have a lot of these special uniques. That you know people can really look for, and they have, you know, it's not like they just straight shoot straight bullets. But they have ones that you know shoot bullets that bounce and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Too. So the, the weapons are even more wild. Yeah, but the rocket rocket launcher is actually not so powerful, right? It was not in the first one. Yeah, the splash was no, weird. Also in one of two, I think it's like it took like took like two or three rockets to kill an enemy. But you just one. You got a weaker rocket launcher then. Ah, okay, good. Cool. Because there's millions of them, so okay. you just got if you just look at the damage score. See, uh, but there's also yeah the splash has changed a lot too because a lot of times in Borderlands one people would complain like shoot next to a guy with a rock launcher we kind of probably should hurt him so yeah can also like it. unlock a new special abilities like Maya has this kind of stasis field whatever yeah. can I unlock, unlock this or is this like like fixed before can you what like unlock new special features new yeah special yeah, yeah the the, the um, if you 
look through the skill tree, they're just called game changers. And so her skill will always her skill will always revolve around crowd control. But what you do with that, you can do like you know mass healing or you know mass shock and fire. Like you can actually affect what's happening to them. You can cause them to get stuck into the ground and different effects like that. But it's her skill will always revolve around crowd control. So I think Borderlands was not really so much about story. Do you think that now it's more like a, is it more, more kind of a deep character driven story or is it? Um, but that's our hope is much much more so. The what we did was uh, in the first one, the mission system, you were kind of limited to just going to one point and then coming back. Right? There's a lot of backtracking or whatever. Um, that's not really con conducive to storytelling, though. Right? The stories don't really do this. Stories don't right. just do that. Right? So in Borderlands 2, the mission system has been replaced. Now you can actually, what you just did in there, where you went to it, you went to talk to Mordecai, he sent you down to the docks, you didn't go check back in when you got to the docks, you kept going now. So we can actually tell more of a narrative and it fits better and it feels better and the communication's better. So you will meet a lot of uh, friends there, you know, that's like, like from Borderlands 1? Oh yeah, Marcus and Scooter, Claptrap, all those. Yeah, you'll run into all of them, yeah. Cool, then yeah, thanks a lot. Sure. Pandora's changed. Are you ready?